Good evening. This is Crime Classics. I am Thomas Highland with another true story of crime. Listen. Officer Rudolph Schmitty Schmidt at the scene of a crime in a beer hall in Nuremberg. A tapping a broken beer mug with his polished boot toe. Accounting. One. Two. Three. Four. Hmm. Four of them. Four corpses, that is. Officer Schmidt spies a thing, a clue. One. Buns? Who left a bag of buns? Officer Schmidt just standing around with a bag of buns and thinking. What a man to have committed such a crime. A brute, a monster, a muscular fiend who liked buns. Tonight, my report to you on Bunny Baumler, his close brush with fame. Crime classics. A series of true crime stories taken from the records and newspapers of every land. From every time. Your host each week, Mr. Thomas Hyland, connoisseur of crime, student of violence, and teller of murders. Now, once again, Mr. Thomas Hyland. Scheimerhorn was the master singer of Nuremberg in 1820 and held sway for three golden years until he lost his voice in a manner which sent a ripple of laughter across the continent. Other amusements Nuremberg furnished the continent, uh, clever toys, handsome clocks, and wonderful beer. And not too long ago, the city had become part of Bavaria, and its streets now teemed with Tyrolean hats, knitted socks, and jerkins. Somehow a kind of golden glow suffused the city and drifted through its ancient streets, becoming one with the patina laid there by the soft Bavarian music. A place of gentleness and quiet laughter. Stand still so I can hit you! Except at number 23, Brutestrasse. So mellow in you is no more than an owl. A Helga. What? A Helga, please. Good for nothing. Well, listen. Oh, that I should have such a husband as you. Please listen. No. You're the one who will listen. Next door is Frau Diebel, and she is sick in bed. And you know why she's sick in bed? From laughing at you. I'm blind. I'm sorry, I... Oh, nothing you do turns out right. Nothing. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I will say it. This morning, for example, you went out to chop the wood... And you chopped the dachshund. It was a misty morning. Tell me. And I kept telling Bruno not to sleep on the wood pile. Even now, Bruno's head has got more brains than you have. Oh, Helga. Helga. Oh, get you... away. Get out. Please, Helga. Please what? One more chance. Oh, you're small and you're not handsome and you bumble. I ask myself constantly why I ever married you. Because I love you. Ah. I'll show you I love you. How? The watch you admire near Kleinhaus jewelry shop. You shall have it. Where did you get 400 marks? <laughs> Helga. Helga. Bunny's got away. You know Bunny's got away. Oh. Helga. Come here. Come here, Helga. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Dear Bunny. When will you have the watch? Tonight. Now hush. Hush. That night there was a quarter moon over Nuremberg, April the 4th, for the Nurembergers, the first night of the Bach beer season. So there was celebration in the streets and the squares of the town and in the hills all around by the mayor's decree. Festival of spring and the ram. Everybody out, laugh and dance and sing and clink tankards and froyleins and fellows. Everybody out. Now, while all this was going on at the height of it, 
Bonnie Baumler breaking the window of the back door of Klein Holt's jewelry shop. Reaching around and opening the door. Sneaking around. Crashing into a display case and shattering it. Become alarmed. Another display case. Panic stricken. Head on into Herr Kleinholz's cuckoo clock. Knocking himself unconscious. Is this not a dirty thief? Being awakened the next morning by the police. Yes, this is a dirty thief. Huh? Did you not commit a crime? Oh. Yes, you did commit a crime. Yes, he did commit a crime. And he was sentenced to three years in jail for breaking and entering. It just seemed that Bunny Baumler put a hex on everything he touched. The fellow inmates noticed this and shunned him. Thus, Bunny became a lonely man. Then one day, three years later, he was released. And he went home. Helga. Helga. Hello, Helga. You're back. I missed you. Why did you come back? Why? To make a mockery of my life again. To make it a laughing stock. I love you, Helga. I love you, Helga. Oh, please don't. Please don't. What? What do you want? Why didn't you come and visit me? I'll tell you why. Because I had no time. Because my husband was in jail and I had to work so I would not starve. Helga. What now? I brought a watch. What? A watch, Helga. Remember the last time I saw you, I said I was going to get your watch? Well, here it is. It's not a very good watch. I agree it's not the watch you wanted, but... It's all I could afford. I stopped in here at Kleinholz's jewelry shop, and I apologized. And with the ten marks the warden gave me, I bought a watch. Here, Kleinholz gave me a special. Such a watch. Oh, let me pin it to you. Well, all right. <laughs> You'll see. I've changed. We'll be very happy as... <coughs> oh, Helga. Oh, I did not mean to stick oh, you. Take this watch. Oh. Oh, you broke the watch. I worked three years. Oh, get out. No, no, no. Get out of please, here. Please, let me stay. Where will I go? What will become of me? I love you so much. I love you so dearly. Listen, I'll work hard and we'll get rich. Oh. I will be rich. And you'll be proud. And you'll wear fine things and ride in carriages. Oh, Helga, I do love you so. Oh, why should I fool myself? Fool yourself? I am the kind of woman a man like you deserves. You're beautiful. You're kind and you're gentle and you're understanding. And you're my life. And I love you. Listen. Are you hungry? Yes. Well, here's money. Go to the baker and buy buns. While you're gone, I'll start a rabbit stew. And listen. I love you. And listen. With the change, you may stop at the beer hall and have a glass of beer. A glass of... My Helga! Go, go. How was prison terrible? Uh, lonely. You look smaller. Uh, prison shivers. Uh, what can I do for you? Bun. Oh, don't tell me which kind. I remember the sticky ones with apples inside. Yes, yeah. a dozen. A dozen. Oh, it is nice to have you back with us, Eva. <laughs> Why are you laughing? was not the same. <laughs> not the same. Please don't laugh. Oh, oh very well. Here are your buttons. Fifteen pennies. Yes. yes. Well? Uh, um, yes? I lost my money. Oh, oh please. <laughs> Oh, take them. Take the buns. Your wife will pay later. Take them. 
Oh, you, you must not do that. Please. All right. Nuremberg is now the same. Herr Baumler is back. And immediately you came here to buy a beer. Well, not exactly. Oh, in a beer hall? You did not come exactly to buy beer? Well, I was down the street at the baker's, and I thought I'd drop in to look around, see if anything's changed. Dear, come with me. I am so happy to see you. I must give you welcome. So, a beer on the house. <laughs> on the house. But your sign up there. Oh, forget the sign. This one is free. And besides, this is a happy occasion. Oh? In the back, my husband talks to my daughter's fiancé. Oh, how is your daughter? Oh, at last. Oh, congratulations. Oh, and such a dowry. So expensive. Oh, 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 I drink to the young people's happiness. Well, all I did was put down the stein and... Must have had a crack. <laughs> Herr Brummel is back. Herr Brummel is back. <laughs> I beg your pardon. That's all right. I forgot the buns. I left them. I'll go out and get some more. I brought the buns, but I forgot the buns. I left them. I'll go out and get some more. Please. Oh, please. Why? Stop mocking me. Just because I forgot the buns, you stand there and mock me. For a half hour, you call me names. And you answer to each one. I'm crazy. Is this the residence of Herr Barmela? Yes. May I come in, please? Yes. What is it? What does the policeman want here? Herr Baumler? Yes? Are these your buns? Oh, here. Uh, take them and tell me, are these your buns? Oh, yes. Um, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, they're my buns. Then you were in the beer hall of Herrn Frau Schnitzler. Recently? A Herr Schnitzler, you will recall, a big man. Huge. His wife, an Amazon. His daughter, likewise, but heavier. His prospective son-in-law towers over all of them. Yes? Yeah. A few moments ago, their bodies, the bodies of all four of them, were found in the beer hall. Beaten, bludgeoned. Dead? All four of them. Murdered. The work of a great criminal, of audacity and feeling, of strength and fury and passion. Officer. Of boldness to have murdered four. What a man could do this. Officer, I... A crime unparalleled in the annals of Nuremberg. And I did it. And I did it. Standing there, jaw thrust forward, chest out, stomach in, hands by his side, Bunny seemed to grow. Bunny! It was easy. And stroked Helga's cheek. Whereupon a light kindled in her eyes and glowed as she looked at him. For all at once, Bunny Baumler was special, above the crowd, and no one could laugh at him anymore. You 
are listening to Crime Classics and your host, Thomas Hyland. His report to you on Bunny Baumler, his close brush with Spain. <laughs> about police methods in Nuremberg in 1820, it was better to confess, or as one wit had it, as many people died in the interrogation chamber as on the gallows. And not that the police were particularly brutal, they just wanted to get it over with and get outside again. Again, it should be noted that the Nuremberg police were thorough and persistent, as witnessed the famed 20-year search for Karl Kroger, which ended in our own country, and which caused the notable and bitter exchange of letters between the mayors of Nuremberg and Milwaukee, and later President Polk's manifesto. And so it was then, when in the interrogation chamber, Bunny Bombler said, I did it. The police said, Good boy. I don't know what came over me. Fury. Yes. Blind rage. Yes. Passion. Oh, yes. Tell me why you did it. Those four people, they mocked me. And then you... I told them to stop mocking. And then you... I warned them. And then I you... I picked up an andiron. And andiron. I picked up a heavy uh, candlestick. Heavy candlestick. I picked up a, uh, an axe. I picked up an axe. And then you... Good boy. And the word got out... It was none other than Bunny Baumler who had taken an axe to Herr and Frau Schnitzler and Fräulein Sophie and Herr Gertner, Sophie's fiancé. Suddenly, Bunny's name was on everyone's lips. A hero of frightfulness, a dread colossus, Bunny Baumler, murderer. Bunny? How does it happen you have the name of Bunny? When I was a boy, Magister. And? I was timid. And you ran away when there was trouble? Yes, sir. Then how is it you had the courage to kill four people? I've changed. Four large and strong people. I've changed completely. There was fury, blind rage, and passion. And I killed them. I see. What are they saying about me now? You are the most talked of person in Nuremberg. Do they laugh? They shudder. And what else? Still, each day the women congregate outside the prison walls hoping for a glimpse of you. All right, Jayla. Take him away. to tell you a little about this magistrate Bunny just spoke with. He was none other than Adolf Megler, the boy wonder of the early Bavarian School of Applied Psychology, and none other than the Adolf Megler who quit, show me a man and I'll show you a madness. Adolf Megler found so often in Freud's bibliography as well as in Gessner's. So, he was a man with a mission, this Megler, as soon as he'd had this chat with Bunny Baumler. He went first to the bakery. There was something in his eyes when he came yes, in. Yes, yes. A, a madness. The way he looked at me. Yes, yes, yes. Please. But I'm trying to tell you, you how... Have known him for a long time? Oh, yes. Tell me about it. Well... Yes. Kaska? Yes? I am Adolf Megler, magistrate. What do you wish of me? Bonnie Baumler served a three-year jail sentence in this cell, did he not? And you were his cellmate, were you not? Yes. What kind of man was he? <laughs> What's the matter? Bunny? <laughs> Bunny Baumler? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
Tell me about him. Yeah, I want to. I, I need the laughing. Oh? Oh, a fumbler, a clown. Oh? He was comical. He, he could never do anything right. Once. Once what? You remember the prison break last year? Hans Kundler and his three brothers? They'd gotten outside the wall. Sneaked right out and the guards had not seen them. So what does Bunny do? Runs over here to this window. And he gets in this chair and yells, Hans! Goodbye, Hans. Tell my wife I miss her very much. Yells and yells at Hans Kundler and his three brothers. They're buried right over there in the graveyard. Oh, let me tell you about... What? The, uh, there was a thing that happened at the soccer game when we were playing the guard. And Bunny... <laughs> and Bunny... <laughs> I need to know about him, Frau Baumler. What can I say? The kind of man he is. Well, you know the kind of man he is. Fearful, mighty, with no pity, a destroyer. Tell me about your marriage. <sighs> Why do you sigh? My honeymoon, for example. At the spa at Bod Giesling. Oh? A tragedy. Oh? He hired a band of serenaders. Men with guitars and Swiss bells to stand outside our window and play. And? They came right through the window. Robbers. Stripped us of everything. And the next day... What happened the next day? He fell in. Oh? The spa. He leaned over too far and he was almost taken underground. He always leans over too far. Now tell me... Tell you what. Was he ever vicious to you? Well? No. Meek? Yes. A fumbler? Yes. He can never do anything right? Never. Let me tell you. What? When we returned from Bad Giesling, when our honeymoon was over, he carried me over the threshold. And when we got into the room... <laughs> but what? What happened? <laughs> spent a week in this way, questioning all those who had known Bunny Baumler. And this, in summation, was the reaction to Bunny when recalled as the man he used to be. <laughs> so, Adolf posited himself and made mental treatise of this man the papers called the most dangerous criminal of the 19th century. Then he called Bunny into his chambers. And when you're finished taking off his chain, jailer, you may leave. Now... Remarkable. What is remarkable, my friend? That you have the courage to be in the same room as I am. And I am without chain. And I am without a gun. Remarkable. Don't you fear me? I have inquired about you, Baumler. Yes? Old friends, relatives, your wife. Yes? Don't you know? I warn you, I I killed four people. And it's not safe for you to be near me. For any moment, I may kill again because I... I found it easy to snuff people's lives out like that. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Well, no, please. That's the story of your life, is it not? What is it? Saying please to people. I am a murderer, but I, I am polite. A murderer? Yes, a frightful murderer. Frightful. The most dangerous criminal of the 19th century. My people shudder when my name is mentioned. Well, you're a liar. I am not. You couldn't kill a fly. I'm a brutal, vicious being. <laughs> you couldn't kill a fly. I slaughtered four people with an axe. You did not. Well, you are. Uh, what? If I had an axe, I'd show you. Pity, I have no axe. However, well, uh, that, what? that andiron, for example. 
secret. And I am... Take it. Let's see what you'll do with it. Go on. Take it. Funny. Very well. Give it to me. And now what will you do? What will you do? You are... I... Uh... I cannot. <laughs> Money Baumler was thrown out of jail, a fake. Three days later, one Rudy Himmelstoss was found walking the hills outside Nuremberg still angry and muttering to himself about four people in a beer hall he had bludgeoned to death in a fit of rage. He was hanged. There's only one other thing to say about Bunny. He inherited a fortune. A relative in the New World had died and willed Bunny his wealth. But the boat Bunny took out of Hamburg was none other than the ill-fated Koenig Otto, the first one, the one which sank from sight over the horizon and was never seen again. <laughs> just a moment, Thomas Highland will tell you about next week's crime classic. Bunny Baumler, tonight's crime classic, was adapted from the original court reports and newspaper accounts by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. The music was composed and conducted by Bernard Herman, and the program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Thomas Highland is portrayed on radio by Lou Merrill. In tonight's story, Howard McNear was heard as Bunny. Featured in the cast were Irene Tedrow, Edgar Barrier, Paula Winslow, Martha Wentworth, Jack Crucian and Benny Rubin. Bob Lamont speaking. Here again is Thomas Highland. Next week, a cave near Knavesboro, England, in the year 1758. The remains they dug up had been there 15 years, a time enough for a murderer to have become very respectable. It's listed in my files as Mr. Clark's skeleton in Mr. Aram's closet. The noise it made. Thank you. Good night. come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.